I'm building a two trailer tiny house and this is going to be a very cool build up day. In this video, we're gonna check out heating, cooling, and ventilation. Well, technically, what I've installed is capable of heating. It's not what I'm gonna be using for heating in the house. I am looking to build my own fireplace, which I'm gonna cover much later in the process. So for now, we're really just looking at air conditioning and ventilation, which doesn't sound that sexy, but I have done some cool stuff that I am pretty excited to share with you. So the three lots of ventilation in this house. The first of them is a range hood, which we'll just cover when we're doing the kitchen. So that leaves us with composting toilet and then the shower slash bathroom. So I'm looking to build my own composting toilet. It's gonna be built into the cabinetry here. The inside of it's gonna be all waterproof and they're gonna use canisters that I swap out. So that means I have to do ventilation somehow. And that kind of turned out a little bit difficult. The most obvious was to run a pipe straight up out through the roof. And th there was a couple reasons why I didn't want to do that. First of all, there's a lot going on up there. I've got a sliding roof that comes over the top. I've got air conditioning to contend with, and I don't have much space in my cabinetry, which meant I was going to lose quite a bit of space to house a, a pipe going up through the roof. Secondly, I've got the mansard finish along the side of this trailer, which looks amazing. And I really didn't want to bring then a ugly piece of PVC pipe straight up out through the roof. So the solution I've gone with is to duck the air from the composting toilet up through to the surfaces hatch where I have to take a cow out through the roof for my shower anyway. And what I've done is created this narrow but really wide duct that has about the same volume as a 100 mil pipe. Now the inlet for that is down here next to the hatch door from a composting toilet. So this is actually a pretty cool feature that I haven't had an opportunity to share with you in a previous build update. What I've done is created this hatch door that allows me to change the canister for my composting toilet without going anywhere near the interior. So underneath here I've got a button that allows me to re release the door and then I can swap the canister without going near the interior. Now that button is actually linked up to the automation as well. So if the house is locked, that's disabled. So you can only open this if the house is unlocked. So with the hatch door open, we can actually see the inlet to the ventilation duct. Now I've got this frame here so that I can make up a bracket that goes in here and holds carbon filter. So the carbon filter is going to slide into here and will filter all of the air coming out of the composting toilet. Now the reason I've done that is to help remove more organics out of the air that's been ventilated up top. Now I do have the outlet to the composting toilet up quite high well above standing height so that any smells that are ventilated should dissipate before it gets down to standing height but the carbon filter should help reduce reduce those organic smells that are going up to the outlet so the air is drawn in through the filter down by that door then comes through the duct up through the wall where it goes up into the roof cavity underneath the sliding roof turns around and then goes through into the services hatch the duct terminates into this ventilation box that controls ventilation of the composting toilet now I've removed all of the flexible duct in here so you can see what's going on, but normally there'd be a flexible duct coming off the other side of that ventilation box and then goes out through the cow in the roof of the services hatch so they can ventilate to the outside of the house. So my ventilation box allows me to attach fans onto that narrow skinny duct that goes through the tiny house. It draws in through the back and then vents out through a 125 mil duct that exhausts out through that cow that sits on top of my services hatch. On the inside, I've got two super quiet, really efficient computer fans, which makes them easy to replace down the track. On the front, I've got these two silicon sheets. Now these things perform two functions. First of all, it stops backdrafts. So one of the things I learned from the micro tiny house is that in really strong winds, you can actually get wind pushing back through the system and up through the composting toilet, which is uh, not always ideal. So the silicon sheet stops the wind from pushing backwards through the system. Secondly, it allows me to control my fans independently. So the main fan running, we can see how it's drawing air in through the back, lifting up the silicon sheet and exhausting out the other side. But my secondary fan is idle. So the silicon sheet is down sealing over the face of that and it's stopping air from being drawn backwards through that fan, which allows me to maintain a negative pressure in my duct. Now the cool part of all of this is the controller that I've made. The controller monitors the state of the fans and reports it back to my home automation. So currently it's monitoring the RPM of this fan and can detect if it stops. So if we take our silicon brush and we stop this fan, within seconds it'll notify me and start up the secondary fan. It'll then keep the ventilation running so I can get up into the services hatch 
and swap out that fan. Now I can control all of this remotely, which means I can turn on both these fans if I want. So if I've got a really windy day and I'm getting back pressure through the outlet, I can start up both fans, which will maintain that air pressure, that negative pressure in my duct down through to my composting toilet. Finally, the ventilation for the shower slash bathroom. Now I really didn't want a white plastic disc in the roof of my bathroom. I, for me, there's nothing uglier. But also I've got this problem where I've got a sliding roof over the top, so I can't just ventilate through the roof. In fact, that's what inspired the idea of the surfaces hatch, being able to put a fan up in the roof above the shower and then ventilate through the roof of that hatch. Now I really didn't want to see the ventilation in my bathroom. So what I've done is I've created an opening in the roof window of my shower where I can draw, draw straight out, but you can't actually see the ventilation unless you're really looking. So inside the surfaces hatch, I've folded up a stainless steel box that allows me to attach the duct of my fan on there. I've then got an inline fan that then hooks up to the cowl that goes out through the roof of my surfaces hatch and takes the steam straight out of the house. Okay, onto the cool part, the air conditioning. <laughs> Are you over the air and ventilation jokes yet? Don't worry, I haven't exhausted them all. <laughs> Don't get hot under the collar. <laughs> I'm just letting off steam. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can't help it if you're not a fan. We all need an outlet. <laughs> oh, okay, seriously, air conditioning. And this is pretty cool. Um, so the first part is, well, why have I gone with something so complicated? And I guess to explain that, we need to have a look at what were the alternatives. And part of the reason that I've had to do something so difficult is because I'm doing a two trailer tiny house and I'm kind of limited on wall space. So the first option was to put the indoor unit here above the couch in the main trailer. Now that would have been the best for cooling down the house, but it didn't really work. First of all, it meant putting the outdoor unit at the back of the trailer here down the bottom. Because it's a two trailer tiny house, the front of this trailer opens onto the side trailer. Now this part of the house is by far the best view of this house. It looks amazing and I really don't want to hang a white box off the back here. But also because I've got this full width window and then these sliding air vents, it was really difficult to bring the, uh, the copper pipe from the outdoor unit into the indoor unit. The second option was to put the indoor unit here above the bed. Now I didn't love a white plastic box sitting above the bed because it really closed in this room, but also it really wasn't good for cooling. Because this is a bedroom with a door, there was nothing moving that cold air into the house. The indoor unit just circulates air through itself, so it would cool down this bedroom, but it'd be really difficult to that, then get that air out here into the main house. So I realized I've never given you guys a floor plan, which might make that a little bit difficult to understand. So I thought I might draw it up and show you what it looks like. So this is our side trailer here. The bedroom sits in here. We've got our built-in wardrobe here that also forms the wall to the bathroom, a shower in here. This is the kitchen. This is the lounge down here. That's that big window at the end and our entrance just here. So the problem I've got, if I was to put the air conditioner in the bedroom here, it's going to circulate air within the bedroom, but it's gonna have a hard time getting any meaningful volume out into the main trailer here that is not only the largest area that I need to cool down, but has the largest amount of glass. Because we have a large window here, a massive window across here and my doors here. So that's when I started looking at ducted unit. Because I don't have any viable wall space to put an indoor unit, the ducted unit gave me more flexibility where I put the cooling unit and then conduct the air to where I need it. Initially, I looked at actually putting it underneath the trailer. In fact, because I'm building cabinetry all across here, what I was looking at doing is putting the unit underneath ducting it up through the cabinetry, and then I could push the air into the rooms that I wanted to cool. Now, the problem with that was it meant a really large duct to maintain air volume, and it also had to be insulated, which ended up taking up a lot of my cabinetry. Now, the unit we're looking at was a slimline unit designed for bulk heads, which meant it was quite compact. And when I was having a look, if I lowered my roof by 15 millimeters, it actually meant I could just fit it underneath the sliding roof. It was difficult, but I had enough space there to be able to get the indoor unit in, take the ducting off, I could duct it straight into the main trailer and then take a side duct off into my bedroom. So with the indoor unit and the return here in the side trailer, and then being ducted through into the main trailer, I've got this cool air being pushed through into the main trailer, then being drawn back through the bedroom, up through the in return and then back through the system. So I've got this really good circulation of air where the cool air has been pushed into the trailer and replacing the warm air as it get drawn back through. Also, as it's coming back through the bedroom, it's slowly cooling down the bedroom as well. And if we have a look at the side view where we can see the unit and the return air in the side trailer, where there's cool air being pushed through here into the main trailer, which is falling down inside the trailer, and then it's coming back around, being drawn back 
up through the system, which is creating this great circulation of air where the cool air is replacing the warm air. So the first problem I had was mounting the indoor unit, and this was a serious challenge. First of all, I, I literally had 10 millimeters to play with as far as height clearance for the sliding roof and the roof below it. Secondly, was mounting the thing. The problem I have is the indoor unit's gonna come back past over where I have cabinetry that's permanent. So my cabinetry is going to come up to about here, which meant I can't get to the bolts on the far side of this indoor unit to undo them if I ever need to remove it. Because I need to remember this indoor unit needs to be serviceable. What I came up with was to not bolt in the side brackets. Instead, create a rail that the air conditioner can sit on with a locating pin that allows me to slide the indoor unit into the permanent duct and then lift it back off without having to get in there and do up bolts. On the other side, I could bolt the unit up which would hold it in place and make sure it doesn't move. This allowed me to mount the unit it's secure and gave me just enough clearance on the other side to bring in my pair coil and take the drain off to the outside of the house. So because the indoor unit sat partially over my cabinetry, I needed to offset the air intake to maintain volume back into the unit. So I created this air box that bolts onto the back of the unit and is offset so that it can draw a large volume through the roof of my bedroom. It also gives me a larger surface area so that I can attach a filter and not restrict that airflow. Now this air box does not give me any room to maneuver this indoor unit if I need to get it out. So instead, what I've done is created this air box so that it can be removed entirely from the inside. So I put brackets onto the inside of the indoor unit and then use hex screws to screw this air box onto the side of it. And you can get up in there and undo that, take the box out separately, that gives me room to maneuver that indoor unit. So with the indoor unit mounted, I then needed to distribute the air. I've created this air box that takes the air through into the main trailer and then diverts off to the bedroom as well. Now, because I couldn't go into the main trailer with the same depth as it comes out of the unit, to maintain air volume, I've widened the duct and where it goes into the main trailer, it steps up but is much wider so that I've got the same volume pushing into the house. So here in the main house, I get this large duct that's got an unrestricted flow from that indoor unit straight into the house. And with this thing running, it blows air all the way through to the back of the house. In fact, standing at that rear window, I can feel the air being pushed down that far. But then I had to take the cold air into the bedroom as well. And now this is where things got difficult. So as you can see, that rail that supports the sliding roof, there's not much room below the bottom of that and where the top of my roof needs to be. Also, the duct needs to be insulated so that I don't get condensation, which reduces the size of my duct even more. So I was able to fit a narrow duct underneath that rail and through into the bedroom here. But because I've got such a large opening on the other side, I wasn't gonna get enough air pressure to push a meaningful volume through here into the bedroom. So what I decided to do was create a diverter that would go inside my duct, which could create some air pressure and divert air through into the bedroom. The problem is I didn't know how much of that diverter I actually needed. I wanted to be able to get some meaningful air into the bedroom so I could cool that down, but also I didn't want to take too much air away from the main house here. And then I kind of had this idea of, what if I could adjust it? In fact, what if I wanted to push more air into the main house during the day, but at night time, push more into the bedroom? So things got a little complicated. What I did was create a variable air splitter so that I can adjust how much air is being pushed through into the bedroom. Now, variable air valves are not a new invention in air conditioning, but they're generally used in far more complex systems and particularly not in a tiny house. But what I like about the variable air valve is, A, I don't have to work out how much I need to split it, but also it allows me to control how I'm cooling down the house. So during the day, I don't need to focus on the bedroom being as cool. I wanna focus on the main living area. So I can shut off the bedroom entirely, which is pushing all of the cool air through the main house here. But because my return air is in the bedroom, it's still pulling that cool air through, slowly cooling down the bedroom. But then into the evening, when I want the bedroom to be cooler, I also don't have as much sun and I'm likely to draw down the batteries. So I can open up that bedroom and push a lot more air through the bedroom. Because the return air is in there, it'll actually start to sense the cool air that's been circulated in the bedroom and it won't be pulling warm air from inside the main house. So I'm cooling the main house far less by keeping that bedroom cool, which means the air conditioner is going to run less. So it allows me with the automation to control how I'm cooling down the house and where I'm pushing the bulk of my air so I can get the most efficient use of it. Finally, there's the outdoor unit and the only place, the only place I could put on these trailers was the front of the side trailer here. And I tell you, I, I looked at all other options and other than it being quite aesthetically displeasing at the front of the house, 
this was the best spot to put it. Now, it does disappoint me that I've had to put this thing on the outside and it's, it's like sort of now blocking off this beautiful shower with folded corners. At the end of the day, I still got to attach appliances to this house and this is the rear where I'm not going to see them very much from inside the house. So to make it look nice and neat, I've made up these brackets that come from underneath the trailer up and the air conditioner sits on top of. So it looks super minimal from the outside. Just in case I ever have to service the cladding one day, I have bolted this frame onto the bottom of the trailer here. So it allows me, if I ever need to remove this, that I can pull the air conditioner off and then unbolt this frame and then get into that cladding. Now, because this thing's gonna travel down the road and it's sitting on a sort of cantilever bracket here, I've also reinforced the top. So I put a timber into the stud wall on the inside of the house, brought bolts through where I've attached a bracket and a rubber mount that supports the top of this unit. And that stops all movement, both laterally and back and forth away from the house. Now there is one serious issue with the location of this air conditioner and that is it's a long way forward on this drawbar in fact it's right out near the end now i actually disconnected the trailers and weighed my tow ball weight and it was spot on but by putting the air conditioner out here which is about 45 kilos it's put almost entire 45 kilos of extra weight down on that tow hitch which is actually a bit much so i i've calculated by moving stuff around that i need to put 117 kilos at the opposite end of the trailer to counterbalance that air conditioner so what i'm really hoping is i can keep the weight of the trailers down and i can use some ballast at the other end to counteract the weight of that unit because that is a little bit of a problem and how much weight it's putting on there if I want to tow this trailer with a standard four-wheel drive. So that's the aircon and ventilation. And I hope you enjoyed the jokes as much as I did. And if you didn't, you can vent in the comments. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, the cool thing about this part of the build is this is actually all of the services now roughed in, which means the next steps, we actually start moving on to building internal structures and lining, which I, I can't tell you how excited I am for because this thing has just been a shell for so long. So now from this point forward, it's actually gonna start sort of taking shape into a home. In fact, the next steps is starting to move on to some of these internal structures and linings. So before I build the cabinetry in here that separates the bedroom and the bathroom, I'm actually gonna start finishing off some of the bedroom. So I think I'll focus on the lift up bed where I'm gonna have all of the storage underneath. That allows me to get in here, work on that frame, taking it in and out without having to move past what will be final finishes because I'll almost certainly damage some of those. So once I've done that, I can then insulate the bedroom and start lining it and then move forward through here into the bathroom I'll start working on the cabinetry here. So I've got heaps of work to do, but it is actually starting to take shape and I am pretty excited for some of the stuff we're gonna start seeing from this point forward. You guys know the drill, don't hate, educate. Comment down below if you see something this video can be improved or if you've got any questions about the stuff we've talked about. If you're one of the crazy buggers still watching, show us those two hands in the comments. In the meantime, go build cool stuff and I'll see you again soon.